Hello, everybody. Welcome back to um, Line on Eagle's Wings, and this is Sandy. Good evening to each and every one of you. Uh, tonight, we're going to have the topic uh, the Lord put on my heart on uh, the Ten Commandments. Uh, we all have heard about that throughout history that God gave us the Ten Commandments. And um, I'm going to be reading from Exodus 20. And we're going to start, and then I'll explain it as we go. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And that's where a lot of people get tripped up. They feel that they can have other gods besides our Heavenly Father who is in the third heaven. And we'll discuss the third heaven on another, another day. Um, they think that all roads lead to heaven. But in reality, that is in their belief system, but that's error. There's only one road that leads to heaven, and that's the road uh, that we follow with God after we receive Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, and we ask him into our heart, and we turn over the will and what we perceive we want in life to him. And you, you can't worship other gods from other countries or, you know, there's only one God and he's in the third heaven. He's our heavenly father. And um, we worship the, the Holy Trinity, the triune God. It's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. And that's one God. And if people worship other gods other than God, they're an error. The only truth there is, is in the Bible. It's not my perception. It's not your perception. It's what God says about things. And that's where Satan hits us into our belief systems to think, well, it doesn't seem logical to me. Or you have to prove it if you can't prove it. You know, like Doubting Thomas you can't prove it and if it doesn't match up with science it's not it's not true well that's satan hitting that person in the belief system again okay let me continue on um verse four of chapter 20 in exodus thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. We're not to have graven images. We're not to worship them. We're not to hold them up as idols and pray to them. That's forbidden by God. Chapter five, thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of those that hate me. Well, if you're not following God, you're hating him. If you're not worshiping the Holy Trinity, the, our Heavenly Father from the third heaven and his son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, you're an error. Verse 6, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not, will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. We're not supposed to be swearing and, and taking the Lord's name in vain. That again is error and it's wrong and God says don't do it. Okay, now we'll continue on here. Um, verse 8, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. 
but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou not, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor any cattle, not thy stranger that is within thy gates. Well, in this day and age, when you work for a company, and especially the real retail companies or, or companies like that, they're open 24-7, so to speak. Some are open 24 hours. There's uh, restaurants that open up 24-7, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And years ago, there was this thing where everything closed down on Sunday. You, you went and you worshiped God. You honored God's day, and you did no labor. And then they slowly took that away, and they changed that. And there are a lot of companies that make you work on Sunday. And they won't let you off to go to church. You, you have to live like the world then. So, again, you have to pray about it and make choices. Do I want a job that's going to keep me from honoring my father and, and doing what my father tells me to do? And that's honoring the Sabbath and not working on that day. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So even God himself, rested on the Sabbath. He worked six days and he rested on the seventh. We're to do that also. And uh, verse 12, honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Well, what does that mean to honor the father and the mother? You're to, you're to show honor and respect to them. Yeah, you're not to badmouth them. You're not to tell them off. And by no means do you strike your father or your mother. Because that is a, a very wicked, evil thing to do. Okay, verse 13 of chapter 20 of Exodus. Thou shalt not kill. Okay, let's dissect that first on, on uh, chapter 20, verse 13 of Exodus. It says, thou shalt not kill. What is God saying here? It's very plain. God is saying, thou shalt not kill. So what are we killing nowadays? Think about it. Is that following the Lord? Or is that following Satan? Fourteen. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Okay. Uh, what is adultery? That's when two people are married and they go out and they have other sexual partners. It could be male or female or it could be both of them. God said you shouldn't do it. In scripture, in, in before Jesus, they would stone an adulterer to death. They'd kill him. Verse 15, thou shalt not steal. Hey, okay, God says here we shouldn't take what doesn't belong to us. Be it um, from anybody or from anything, um, not from a person, not from a company. Um, if somebody doesn't charge you for something, if you're at the grocery store, you go and you say, hey, you go back and you pay for it. You forgot to charge me for this. I, you know, there are people that, that revel in the fact that they weren't charged for it, that they got something for nothing. Well, how does that say thou shalt not steal? That's stealing. If, if a clerk at a store does not charge you for something and makes that mistake, don't steal. 
go back with your receipt and say, excuse me, I got two tops at $10 each. I owe you $10. Or, excuse me, um, they only charged me for two cat litters and I got three. I owe you for one more. Or whatever it happens to be. Be diligent. Check your receipt when you get home. Check and make sure that they didn't, A, overcharge you. But B, if they, if they undercharge you, go back to that store and honor them. And not steal. Because that is stealing. Even though they, they, don't, they made the mistake, it doesn't give you license to steal. You go back and be honorable and say, excuse me, I owe you more money. Uh, chapter six uh, or verse 16 of chapter 20 of Exodus. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. What does that mean when you bear false witness against the neighbor? It can be a neighbor. It can be a relative. It can be a brother and sister. It can be friends. It can be work associates. It can be uh, friends. Uh Bearing false witness is basically lying. You're saying somebody did something they didn't. It, that's throwing false accusations. That's bearing false witness. You're lying. You're saying someone did something they didn't do it. That's against what God says in his commandments. Verse 17, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor his thing that is thy neighbor's. Covet. Okay, I can look up the word covet, but basically you're jealous that they have it. You want, you, you're coveting, you want what they have. So you take it. If, if, if it's the neighbor's husband, you take the neighbor's husband. If it's the neighbor's wife, you take the neighbor's wife or whatever. Another thing, you know, thou shalt not steal. If you borrow something, return it. If, if you don't return it, you sold them that from that person. They had to work to get it. Again, that's when there's a, sh a seared conscience and they don't feel guilty about doing such things, whatever those things are. Verse 18, and all thy people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God is come to prove you, and that his fear may be before your faces, that ye sin not. And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. Um, I, I don't need to read the rest of it. If you want to continue on, I read up to uh, verse from verse 1 of chapter 20, Exodus. Uh, you can read 23 through uh, 26 on your own. Uh, but those are the Ten Commandments, and we're to follow them. And um, how many people do nowadays? You know. And even God says don't commit fornication. And how much of the world is doing that nowadays? What is fornication? It's having sexual relations with two unmarried people before marriage. And sometimes they never get married. And um, God does not want that. If you feel an attraction or sexual attraction towards another, then by all means get married. But don't put yourself in a position that you, you would commit fornication or adultery. And when you're married, you're married. Be honorable to the wife or the husband to the wife or the wife to the husband. You know, don't, don't cover, cover your neighbor's wife or husband or, you know, anything that they own. 
if you have problem in that area, then stay away from situations that could cause you to sin. Whatever it is, if it's stealing, if it's coveting, if it's, you know, adultery or fornication, don't be alone with the opposite sex. Always have somebody else there. And keep it clean and above board. And if you feel an attraction towards that person, then marry. You know, go to your pastor, get counseling, do marriage counseling, and then get married. But the world doesn't tell you that nowadays. It's go ahead, fornicate, live together. It's okay. And the world looks the other way. It's completely against God and against God's ways. Okay, um, that's it for today. I just wanted to cover the Ten Commandments. The Lord had put it on my heart tonight. I, I hope I'm going to pray for you all right now. Dear Lord, I just come before you in praise and glory and adoration. I just want to thank you for the great God you are. I want to thank you for your Ten Commandments. I want to thank you for your graciousness and your great mercy and your great love for each and every one of, of us. And I pray a shield of protection around all my viewers, all the ones that will come later and view the Lord God. And I pray that your truth will be quickened to their heart, give them your understanding and your wisdom, Father, and open up their spiritual eyes and their spiritual hearing in Jesus' name, that they have eyes to see and ears to hear your spiritual things and your truth, Father. And I, I pray, I pray, Loose the spirit of adoption on, on all the listeners that aren't saved. And I pray that you would draw them nigh unto Lord Jesus Christ for the gift of salvation. Because you stand at the door and knock and you, you want us to let you in, Father. And when, when you do and we ask you into our hearts and into our life and turn over our will to you, you guide and direct us. And you speak to us in our heart by the Holy Spirit, Father. And I thank you. And I thank you for your protection and, and your graciousness towards us and, and being so slow to anger. And I thank you for your, your schools of growth. Teach us to lead us and to direct us, Father. And thank you for your great love. Thank you for bringing your son to die on the cross for our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we'll see you all tomorrow. Um, I'm going to be talking, I believe, unless God changes it, but I'm going to be talking on the Stockholm Syndrome and how it applies to us as individuals and how it applies to the world and what we see going on. But you all have a great day, what's left of it. Love you all, and thank you for listening. Um, if you haven't subscribed, uh, you can subscribe to Sandy B and um, ring the bell, put any comments in the comment section, uh, thumbs up if you liked it, and any, uh, you know, any feedback would be much appreciated or any topic um, that you would like explained, please put it in the comment section. I appreciate that also. Love you all. And have a great evening now. Bye-bye now. Bye. -bye now. Bye.